Malcolm, the boy who can talk to dogs by Karen Bailey, chapter 17. I sat in the dark for a few minutes trying to get my bearings. There were a couple of cracks in the door which let a slither of light through, enabling me to make out the shapes of things close to me. I could see the dog lying a couple of metres away. He kept growling quietly, but unconvincingly, to let me know he was still there. I couldn't see the brigadier because he was behind me, so I tried talking to him. Brigadier, are you okay? Mm-mm-mm. He couldn't speak. He must be gagged. It's all right, I whispered. We've got help coming. He grunted again. I think he'd understood. Okay, my disguise has been a disaster, but hopefully I distracted the gang enough to enable Freddy and the dogs to get back to the barn. Meanwhile, there was nothing to do but wait. Or was there? Maybe I could talk to Brutus. Um, Brutus? It is Brutus, isn't it? The dog looked up. Are you talking to me? Um, yes, my name is Malcolm. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Why are you talking to me? What do you want? I'm hoping you can help me. Maybe I can do something for you. What can you possibly do for me? Unless you can help me escape. Escape? I thought you were part of the gang. Well, you thought wrong then, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if we get help, we'll help you too. Really? You don't me? You're not just saying that? Of course. But why do you want to escape? As we sat there in the dark, Brutus told me about his previous life. He used to live in a large house in the country. He loved it there, and the family he lived with. One day the house was broken into, and all the jewellery and money was taken. The gang that had broken in stole him too. At this point, Brutus got really emotional. They made him become part of the gang, against his will, and he never saw his human family again. The gang had trained him to become a ferocious guard dog, although he hated being mean. He just wanted to go home. I wasn't sure whether I could help him, but promised I'd do my best. There is one thing you could do for me, though. Anything. Just tell me what what you want. Would you mind tickling my tummy? What? Well, I know I look big and scary, but deep down, I'm a big softy. I just want a bit of affection. Why hadn't I thought of that? Everyone needs a cuddle now and again. Why should Brutus be any different? And I bet since he joined the gang, giving him cuddles was the last thing on their agenda. You'll have to come and untie me. He looked suspicious. I promise I won't try and escape. He sidled over. I leant forward and kissed him gently on the head. He looked surprised but grateful. He gently licked my face, then wriggled between me and the brigadier and started chewing at the rope. It seemed to take forever. Then, there, that should do it. He'd loosened the knot enough for me to wriggle one hand free. He shuffled over and rested his head on my lap, putting his legs in the air expectantly. I scratched and tickled and scratched them more. Brutus squirmed with joy, letting out a long, contented sigh. Oh, mm, oh, wow, thank you so much, that was lovely. Unfortunately, he'd only managed to loosen one hand. The rope had been tougher than it looked. I couldn't undo myself, and the brigadier, but then I had an idea. If I couldn't help, maybe I could get to the door and see what's happening through the crack. Brutus, do you think you could help us move towards the door? I'll try my best. Turning my head slightly, I noticed that not only was the brigadier gagged, but he had a sack over his head, so he couldn't see. Brigadier, I'm going to shuffle towards the door. Brutus is going to help us. Can you try and move when I say? Mm. Again, it sounded like he'd understood. It took a lot of effort, especially as we had to do it as quietly as possible. Wriggling and moving our legs together with Brutus nudging us, we must have looked like a weird three-legged race, but on our backsides. As we shuffled, I could feel the friction on my bum as my trousers started to heat up. Great! The last thing I needed now was to burn a hole in my trousers. That would certainly scare people off, my chubby cheeks on display. We managed to get as close as we possibly could to the door. Can you open the door, Brutus? Just a crack so I can see. He nudged the door carefully. It opened a few centimetres. That's enough. I may not be able to physically help Freddy and the other dogs, but at least I could see what was happening and shout a warning if needed. Chapter 18 The men were all huddled round the table talking in urgent tones. I don't know where he came from. Doesn't matter where he came from. What are we going to do with him? We're not really going to eat him, are we? Gus looked disappointed. But I'm starving. Don't be ridiculous, Gus. A bit of torture should do it. Metalmouth chuckled, his teeth clanging menacingly. Torture? I'm a kid. Freddy and the dogs better do something soon. My pain threshold is very low. I felt guilty that I wouldn't be able to help them, but I'd be useless in a fight. 
Unless they were doing maths problems, I'd be no use whatsoever, and I somehow don't think they'll be needed to do one of those. If one gangster can fight three people with his bare hands, how many can five gangsters and a dog wrestle? Show you're working out. Yeah, right. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a small shadow crawling round the outside of the room. At first, I thought it was a rat, but on closer inspection, I could tell it was Bert the Dashund. He must have snuck through a crack in the wall. None of the men had noticed him. He was moving really slowly and would have been really difficult to spot. I wanted to send him a message, but was scared that the other guard dog, Titan, would understand. Bert was getting closer and closer to the door, sniffing away, when one of the gangs spotted him. Ah, a rat, a huge, ugly, horrible rat. He jumped onto a chair. I hate rats. For goodness sake, Gus, you're a grown man, a huge one. Get a grip. Titan, get that rat now. No way. I ate him too. You're on your own, mate. Gus wouldn't have understood, but I did, and had to try really hard not to laugh out loud. Their guard dog was a scaredy cat, or should I say a scaredy dog. All this commotion gave Bert the chance to make his way to the door at the back of the barn. He charged at it full pelt. He might be small for his size, but was very powerful. The door flew open with a loud bang, and Bert barked madly, calling the other dogs, Go! 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 Now! A flurry of fur flew through the door. Henry led the pack with Ruby close behind. Without hesitation, she sank her teeth into the nearest ankle she could find. Got ya! Oh, what on earth? The man didn't stand a chance. Let go, you stupid mutt! Mutt, how dare you, I'm a terrier! It did look funny. This huge giant of a man shaking his leg, trying to get Ruby off. She was stuck fast. She was going nowhere. A canine limpet. Next came Rex, the footballing Labrador, and Max, the sheepdog. They darted round the men, nudging them and barking loudly at the same time, pushing them into the centre of the room. Ralph, formerly known as Benji, the yo-yoing expert, followed. He came up behind Max and Rex with a yo-yo in his mouth. He must have kept the one Freddy gave him. He'd obviously been practising as he started to swing the yo-yo above his head. It sped round and round until all you could see was a blur of red. At the top of its momentum, he angled it towards the back of one of the thug's head. Thwack! There was a loud crack as it made contact. Ow! He stumbled, clutching his head, still spinning. Ralph let go of the yo-yo's string. It arched forward and wrapped round the thug's legs, bringing him heavily down to the ground. Timber! I watched in awe from the doorway. I turned to Brutus. Why isn't Titan doing anything? She's scared of everything. She just pretends to be hard because she's got a deep bark. Still no sign of, sign of Freddy, though. Where was she? What was she planning to do? I didn't have to wait long. I heard a scurrying above me. I looked up. There was no ceiling in the barn. You could see all the way up to the roof. As we were sat in darkness, it was easier for our eyes to adjust and see what was happening above us. I could vaguely make out, make out a person edging carefully along one of the rafters with two King Charles following her. What a brilliant idea. Freddy was always at the top of the climbing frame in PE. There was no way you'd get me up there. I'm sure the gang wouldn't have been able to see her as the barn was quite brightly lit, but the roof wasn't. I could just make out their outline, outline, outlines. They seemed to be carrying something between them. All of the gang had now been herded into the centre of the room, one clutching his head with Gus still on the floor, still not realising that Bert was a dog, not a rat. Ruby was clinging on to her thug and the others were fending off Rex and Max, with Henry in the middle of things, looking as if he was ready to sit on anyone that tried to make a break for it, and believe you me, you would not want to be sat on by him. I looked up again to see that Freddy was now on a beam in the centre of the room, directly above the gang. The cavaliers had stayed where they were, clutching whatever they were carrying between their teeth. Henry looked up and saw them. He nodded at Freddy, she nodded back, then he let out a deep bark. Now! With that, Freddy and the cavaliers dropped what they were holding. It was a net. Where on earth had they found that? Perfect shot. It covered the whole gang, but it wouldn't hold them for long. Freddy had already thought of that. She grabbed the beam with one hand and swung nimbly onto the floor next to them. All those press-ups and swinging from climbing frames had paid off. She took some rope from her pocket, threw one end to Rex and the other to Ralph. They knew exactly what to do. They weaved in and out like maypole dancers round a pole, tying the gang with the rope, holding them fast. They were going nowhere. It didn't stop them shouting, though. Let us go! Oi, Sonny, undo this now! She just grinned at them and said in a really girly voice, So sorry, Fur. I don't know how to undo knots. She looked up into the rafters. The two cavaliers were now looking rather nervous, realising how high up they were. Come on, Tobias, Tabitha. Jump. I'll catch you. They obviously trusted her, as first Tabitha jumped into her arms, followed by a more nervous Tobias. 
With all the dogs on ground level, Freddy spoke to them all. Now, we need to find Malcolm and the Brigadier. Unbeknownst to us, though, one of the gang had slipped into the corner of the room, watching the whole scene unravel in front of him. As Freddy and the dogs, proud of what they'd achieved, were celebrating, high-fiving and hugging, he crept out of his hiding place. Before I'd had the chance to shout a warning, he grabbed her from behind, holding her tightly in a kind of wrestling hold. As all this was happening, I hadn't noticed Brutus beside me, gnawing at the rope. You're free. What? I felt the rope loosen and could move both hands freely. Much good it'd do me. I couldn't take this man on. He was as wide as he was tall, a human squared. I'm not going to be of any use, unless you can untie the brigadier as well. No, my teeth are too sore. You have to at least try. Brutus was right. I had to do something. Under normal circumstances, Freddy would have been fine. She could have dealt with this man and the rest of the gang. But as he'd surprised her and held her in such an awkward position, she couldn't wriggle free. Brutus nudged nudged me. He's ticklish. What? Ticklish, you know. At this, he scratched his stomach with his paw and gave out a deep chuckle. Well, that's good to know. What am I supposed to do with that? Brutus looked hurt. But then the penny dropped. Even at times of danger, those stupid sayings come out. I smiled slowly. Oh, Brutus, that's genius. I hugged him awkwardly and for the first time since I met him, he wagged his tail. I peeked round the door. Most of the gang were still wriggling under the net like a load of angry salmon, if salmon had gold teeth and tattoos. The dogs gathered round them, growling and snapping at any that tried to break free. Strangely, Titan, the other guard dog, had retreated to the corner of the barn and watched silently. Brutus was right. She hated the gang too. The man holding Freddy, I realise now, was the man who seemed to be in charge. He was still holding her in an arm lock, but seemed to be losing energy, as Freddy was not giving in, and with her free legs kicked out, at the same time using language that would make a sailor blush. I pushed the door slowly, hoping it wouldn't make a noise. Fortunately, Freddy and her aggressor were facing the other way. The dogs hadn't noticed me either. I tiptoed slowly until I was right behind the thug. He was holding Freddy in such a way that his arms were up in the air. This would make my task much easier. I raised my hands to just under his big, hairy, and not very fragrant armpits. Ugh, maybe now was not the time to suggest a bit of deodorant wouldn't go amiss. I took a deep breath, at the same time leaping forward, and dug my fingernails into his sensitive flesh, tickling with all my might. It was as if he'd been electrocuted. He jumped high in the air, releasing Freddy, then curled up on the floor, wriggling and giggling. Stop! <laughs> Please, stop! No, no I hate uh, anything but... Freddy spun round and hugged me. Oh, Malcolm! Not now, Freddy. Can't you see I'm busy? I carried on tickling this, well, now he was just a writhing square of jelly. Fetch the rope from the room! But she didn't need to. Brutus was stood next to her with a rope in his mouth. Boy, this dog was clever. Freddy carefully took the rope from him, and whilst I carried on with the tickling, she started to tie him up. Luckily, Freddy was back to her full strength, and with Brutus stepping in to help too, it didn't take too long. As soon as we had the final member of the gang secured, Freddy hugged me again. Oh, Malcolm, that was so brave. She gave me a playful punch. Ow, that hurt. And tickling is hardly a superpower. True, but it was so clever to think of that. I wanted to fess up that it was actually Brutus that thought of it, but he seemed happy for me to take the praise and gave me a secret wink. Just like Dad would have. The brigadier, quick. We must go and untie him. Freddy looked puzzled. What do you mean? We've already found him. He's in a small hut behind the barn. We found him whilst we were looking for stuff to capture for the, to capture the gang. He wanted to join us but was too weak, so we told him to rest up and go for help if we needed it. None of this made sense. Well, who was I tied up to? We ran back to the room where I'd been held hostage. The man who I thought was the brigadier had now wriggled one of his hands free. With this free hand, he reached under the hood and removed the gag. Hello, Malcolm. Hang on. I recognised that voice. Before he had the chance to, I leapt forward and pulled off the hood. Dad! I threw myself into his arms and we hugged forever. (laughs) 